Welcome back to the channel, my friends. I know it's been a while. Did you guys miss me? I know everyone clicked on this video thinking we're going to talk about coupons, which we are, but we're going to exploit a coupon printer service with an unquoted service path vulnerability and maybe find more than one vulnerability. But before we get into that, don't you guys just love CTF videos? There's one on Hackersploit right now on the very topic from Try Hack Me. Now, whether or not there are some fallacies in that video, who am I to troll anyone? It's probably the, uh, the secret dude acting like he left. There's a VM where running on the same network. On, uh... But anyways, I'm going to point out two things that will make your exploit work and why it will work. And to be honest, this is a privilege escalation exploit. So we're assuming you already have low level privileges. So let's dive into this vulnerability and expose some secrets. So this is a vulnerability you can search for right now on your Windows machine. And I'm going to use my laptop and there are several vulnerabilities already on this laptop from outdated services and programs. One of them being a coupon printer used to download coupons. But before we get into that, let's throw the command up on the screen and talk about it. So we're gonna use WMIC to gather service information. And then we're going to use find string. What we're going to do is we're going to display the services that start at system startup. And then we're going to use find string again to do a reverse search because we want to ignore services in that folder. And then one more time, we're going to use find string and we're doing a reverse search for the quotes character. And what it's going to do is display service path that are without quotation. Now, once you found your vulnerable service, there will be two key components to making your exploit work. First, we need to place our own executable into a writable directory. And second, we need to understand the naming convention. So when the service restarts itself, our executable will get started along with the vulnerable service. So for example, in Hackersploit's video, he found a vulnerable service in the program files, unquoted path service, common files, unquoted path service .exe. Now what he needs to do is place his malicious executable in a writable directory, and he's going to put it in program files, unquoted path service, and he's going to call it common.exe. Now, why is he calling it common.exe? He says you can call it anything you want to, but that's not true. You can't call your executable purple banana beans and expect it to work. He's calling it common.exe because of the naming convention, common files is the next subfolder. For this attack to work, like this write-up says, the system will interpret this path in the following order. C program.exe. It's calling it program.exe because the folder is program files. And if it doesn't find its executable there, it's going to look in program files and it's going to look for a.exe because the next folder is a subfolder. If it doesn't find an executable there, it's going to go down into a subfolder, look for B exe because the next subfolder is B subfolder. And then it's going to keep going down the list until it finds its executable. So if I name something purple banana beans, it falls outside of the naming convention and it won't get executed. So let's jump over to the coupon printer vulnerability. All right, guys, so here I use WMIC to get the vulnerable service information. And you can see I have two services running that are vulnerable. The first one is CCD monitor service. And the second one is the coupon printer service. And we can exploit either one of these. But to do it, again, you have to have right privileges. 
and it has to be named the correct name. The executable for the coupon printer service is going to look in the C directory for something called program.exe. If it doesn't find it, it's gonna jump into the C program files x86 and look for an executable called coupons.exe. Doesn't find it, it's going to jump into the next directory and look for coupon print service.exe. So in theory, if I place a backdoor in the C directory where I have write privileges to, and I call it program.exe, if I were to restart the service, it will load my executable along with the coupon printer service. And all this can be done through Metasploit. So if you need to see a video on that, hit me up, but let's go ahead and take another look at this. So here we have a program in the C directory called program.exe. And if we just go up a level and look at the permissions in here, you can see full control. And that's where I'm going to place my exploit. So we don't drag this video out longer than it has to be. All that needs to happen now is to restart the service and program.exe will run for us, giving us elevated privileges. Now you might be wondering, how do we get a low level shell? Or how do we get an exploit on our Windows machine? Or how do we even escalate using Metasploit? How do we use MSF Venom? How do we use WinPeace to look for vulnerabilities? And how do we upload to the directories and restart services? Well, my friends, those are all great questions and you're just gonna have to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video where we expose more secrets.